All right, guys, welcome to another cash game review session. Today, we are reviewing our boy James and his 25 Russian cash session on GG Poker. If you enjoy the stream, guys, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. The cash game strategy videos come every Thursday and we have other stuff dropping on Sundays. But I hope you enjoy the video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. So ranges that I'll be using that James doesn't use, he'll use different ones, but I always just go to the preflop Bible light. So we'll have a look at ranges here. Even if they're different from other ones, they're not going to be wildly different. So let's say under the gun here um, is opening maybe threes plus. Other ranges might just say sixes plus and might always open King Jack or never open King Jack or whatever, but they're going to be relatively similar. Uh, what sizes do you use? Is it? Yeah, I always use 3X. Um, I thought 3X because it's usually softer down here. I'm just happy to play bigger pots, but looking at my graph, it's obviously not going well, is it? So... I, you could yeah, probably, 3X, yeah. I think it's fine. I think you'd have to be a little bit tighter in each position if you're opening 3X. So whenever, whenever I think about things in poker and I'm unsure about it, I try and think of in terms of extremes so like let's say we were just open shoving or folding like we're open to 100 yeah. big blinds or, or zero we'd have to open a very very tight range so the bigger your open size the tighter your raise raising range has to be really i don't really know what to say about 3x in from every position i used to do it when i was playing from 25 and l on gg i used to do the same thing even up to 100 you know th there's probably an argument for or against i i can't really tell you you know what's going to be it's really difficult to say what would be the most profitable at least your logic okay. makes sense though that we're, we're okay playing bigger parts in general yeah so I, I don't really know what to say about it other than i i wouldn't recommend it to other people okay but i i i'm not going to tell you to stop it because i don't know if that's going to be a problem do you see what i mean Right, uh, Jack 9 suited to be open. This is the first time we've played, really. I'm probably betting on this board. Generally, you want to be using a smallish size. I think this is fine. Uh, I, I don't mind this hand to bet. We, I guess we block some Asex hands, but also there's a lot of turns we can continue on. For example, the Queen of Clubs. So I'd definitely like to see a bet here. I think generally, when we have when we have no showdown, but we have some sort of draw, we generally want to bet here, especially when we're the aggressor. Overbetting is interesting. Um, I'm probably not overbetting this, but I think overbet is okay. We do have stronger hands than he does. He shouldn't have ace queen, aces, queens, even sevens he could three bet sometimes, stuff like that. So I'm okay going with an overbet size. It's good in the way that we'll utilize our advantage, but what hands do we really want to overbet here for value? Pocket queens, definitely. Pocket sevens. But hands like ace queen, for example, I'm not going to want to overbet because we block in a lot of his continues. So there's not much that I'd want to overbet here for value. So I don't want to overbet that much as bluffs. In saying that, I think that at the smaller stakes, it definitely works pretty well because people are going to overfall to over bluffs. But from doing a video with Nick Eastwood, I was saying this, that a lot of overbets on the turn from what I see from aggressive regs are just very, very bluff heavy. Even solvers in some spots when they overbet, like we looked at a spot where it was a king high board similar to this and the yeah. solver wanted to overbet kings, which was top set. But nobody would overbet kings because you block of what you know a lot of what you want your opponents to continue with. So for here for overbetting for value, I'd want to overbet sevens, threes, queens. But then I wouldn't want to overbet a lot of other hands like ace king and, and ace queen and stuff like that. So I, I like the fact that you're betting. Yeah. There. Maybe you are a bit of a punter. We'll we'll see in other hands. But I think it's better to be aggressive than to be too nitty. So we haven't seen this hand yet. Wait till you see the end of this. All right, God <laughs> fucking hell. Here we go. Sixes. We're going for a three bet, which I think is fine. So do you? call anything out the small blind or are you only three no. down i only call something out the small blind if i say like we're multi-weight or there's a fish in the big blind or something so small blind versus button this is what bluff the spot recommends for three betting which i think is fine i'm probably not three betting fives ever i'm probably using sixes as the bottom of my range here it's going to depend on the opponent if my opponent's a very good rag and super aggressive i'm not even going to three bet hands like sixes i'm just going to three bet a bit more narrow even you know king jack off even ace jack off i might consider folding just because aggressive rags are going to fall back more, they're going to be in position, they're going to, you know, they're going to give us a tough time in general. So sixes, I think, is fine as a three bat, and I think the size is pretty much perfect. One thirty percent button. Okay, and we see a ten on the river. <laughs> Do you know what? Fuck it, I'm okay with jamming. It's it's one of them. We block King Jack, which isn't really that. That's relevant. what my that's what my logic was. The thing is, it depends on how you want to construct bluffing here. So I don't mind this as a bluff because we block the nuts, which is King Jack, which is a possible hand, by the way. He can call flop and turn with King Jack, maybe not to an overbet. But I guess we do have an advantage on the board. The, the problem is we don't block any of the strongest hands other than King Jack. They might call down like Ace-10. Ace-10 is a very viable hand here. 
a7 sevens and threes are still viable once you over about the turn he shouldn't really be raising all that much i, I see this a lot from like not newer players but like th th this would never occur to me you know way back when to to do this and then i think in this sort of new age we live in of over bets and Dog Polk just overbet everything against Nagrano and stuff. People are like, oh yeah, let's just overbet the shit out of everything. And so often from my experience, I found it to be bluff. Some of the call downs that, are, that I've made in spots like this, where they've overbet the turn and 2x pot jammed the river, and they've just got absolutely nothing. So I think it's going to be bluff heavy here. Like, what, what would you say you're shoving? What, what would you say you're taking this line with for value? All my two pair plus hands. But are you actually doing that though? Yeah, I am doing that, yeah. I'm quite... I do overbet a lot of turns with, like, say, like, ace-king on an ace-high board as well. Okay. I find that a lot of people just have an ace, see an ace, and think, oh, I've got an ace, I'm going with it. Okay. That's what it seems to look Well, in which case, overbetting and then 2x pot jamming jack high probably isn't going to work that well then, is it, James? That's true, but... <laughs> um, but, yeah, I get your point, and as long as you're balancing it, I guess it's fine. You know, when I talk about strategy, when I do these videos, I, I'm, I'm in two sort of minds. I, I want to, you know, try and direct a, a good strategy but i also want to try and explain you know exploits and yeah yeah what we shouldn't be doing so I, I think it's probably fine here you know from a theory point of view but then from an exploitative point of view if you don't think he's folding that much the thing is as well i don't think we have that much for value we have king jack for sure we have again probably sevens and queens probably not aces maybe ace queen but like i say i'm not over betting the term with ace queen but i think it's fine but we probably don't ever have ace 10. And maybe he just fucking calls you down with something like ace 5. So I don't mind the aggression. I don't know if it's just me being a bit of a, a bit of a nit, a bit of a pussy. But just seeing you being all in by the river and jack high in a single raise pot. I just think whenever somebody triples like this versus me and a hero call them. I just think you didn't need to lose a buy in there. Uh, I've not even seen if you jammed the river yet anyway. So. The six is a definitely mistake by the way. Um, we'll go back to the hand in a second, but yeah, that's fine. The six is make a mistake. mistake on the flop. I make a mistake. And what would you say? I the remember mistake seeing is it on the flop. I bet you small. I think I should go more sixty-six percent pot. For what reason? I think I just have all the over stuff, and I think to the smaller bet, I think it just calls too much. I can get behind that really. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of a weird one. So on this board, I think solvers generally want to pick larger sizes. I'm not hundred percent sure. He's got more six five uh, x than we do. We've got a similar amount, I guess, like five six suited, four five suited. Ace five suited. So I'm okay going big on this board in general. The sixes, it doesn't really make sense in a vacuum to, to bet big with sixes because we're not really getting much worse to call other than like, you know, high equity draws and such. So, you know, if we bet large with a hand like aces, there's still a load of over pairs here. If we bet large with a hand like sixes, we're just basically protecting our hand. But then at the same time, our hand does want a reasonable amount of protection. But yeah, so yeah, I, I, I agree that we could probably go bigger here. And I'm definitely okay with it. Uh, and then I think we just generally want to check this turn a lot. And are we getting called down by this guy on the left? What What do you think he should call with James on the on the left hand side? I think he can have um, threes and sevens, and then yeah, ace ten as you said. Like I think he should probably probably call all those. I mean, I think he should fold worse aces like ace nine lower than ace nine i don't think he should call ace jack all the time but i think he probably should call it sometimes i i, I guess i don't mind that jack nine we do block some of his strongest one pair hands i guess in fact we block his is literally his strongest one pair hand <laughs> so there's argument for for that that we do actually block some pretty strong hands if you're saying here you don't think he should call with a lot then are you really jamming here for value because you're expecting him to fold a lot and I think this is what I see from a lot of players that they don't balance it well enough that they're just bluff heavy because when they do these sizes, they're just utilizing maximum fold equity and just being like, right, I really want this guy to fold. I don't think he should call to this sizing with a lot of hands. So I'm just going to blast him as much as I can. So he folds. And I don't think that they have the same logic when they have a good hand and that they want to use this big size to balance their bluffs. They just think I want to get caught. It's almost like being greedy, right? That they're like, okay, yeah, I want to yeah, get yeah. called, so I'm going to bet three quarters pot. So many times, honestly, from my experience, I've seen people over bet the turn, then three quarters the river for value, and I've seen them over bet the turn and over bet bluff, uh, uh, over bet jam as a bluff. Just because your natural, you know, your natural instinct would be like, I want to get value here. Why am I, you know, if you've got something like ace queen or aces, queen's a bit different because at least we unblock like the top pairs. But, you know, why would we 2x pot jam? So, yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't really mind the line, but for me, it just feels a bit punty that I just don't want to be putting this amount of money in. Oh, we get it through, do we?
After all that, <laughs> after all that, that was me thinking it was getting cold. Uh, tough spot here with the sixes, to be honest. I mean, I think we should be calling. Just because he can have some, like... This is the same guy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. He's probably just pissed off here. Um, <laughs> he, he can have some, like, 9, 10 of hearts and, like, ace, jack of hearts, ace, queen of hearts. Because we've got a small size on the flop as well, he, he, he's going to have a reasonable amount of float. So I think we should be calling this turn. And it doesn't feel very nice because we don't have a very good hand, really. You know, sometimes, it, even when he has better hands, if he has, like, 10s or jacks or whatever, or ace, eight suited we can drill a club and it might just go check, check. Like, I don't think enough people are going to bluff. Like, let's say he has 7-8 of diamonds and or 8-8 of diamonds, but in the turn mainly to protect his hand. I don't think you see enough people turn those hands into a bluff on four clubs, even though I think you should. Because if it, if it yeah, runs yeah. out of four clubs and you've got a pair of eights, like, you're pretty low down in your range, even though you've got, like, top two pair effectively. Like if it's like the two of clubs. So I don't think Maybe you're going to get... on these bad boards, you mean, yeah? Yeah, so I don't think you're going to get bluffed on the river all that much. And again, we're getting a reasonable price. We're getting three to one. So, you know, we only need 25% equity. So it, it's annoying. It, it's a grim spot here. And against tighter players that I know are just like, you know, really tight regs, I'm probably just going to fold. But this is a problem with three batting hands like sixes and stuff out of position. So, you know, if, you, if you're against good players, I'm like, if I'm against a solid reg, I'm just not going to three bat hand like sixes because a hand like sixes doesn't have that much playability, right? Whereas a hand like jack nine suited has a bit more. When when you have sixes, you're going to be in these, you know, middling spots where you've just got like, you know, a shit pair and a six high flush draw. Whereas with jack nine suited or jack 10 suited, a lot of the time you can just have basically polar hands. Like, you know, you can have like flush draws where you, you know you can bat or whatever, or you'll have like flushes and straights and, you know, y your pairs are going to be higher and easier to play sort of thing, so. Does that still play the same if I get a bit bigger on the flop, like? As, as it depends because he, he, he's going to be floating wider. Uh, if he bet bigger on the flop, then I could understand maybe he's folding be... because his range is going to be tighter. We bet one third, he's still going to have hands like, let's say, ace, ten of hearts here, or he should have ace, ten of hearts here for a one third. And then sure, he might yeah. just think, fuck it, I've got nothing here on the turn. I'm just going to blast some money in and pray that he folds. Whereas if we bet three quarters on the flop, he's not going to have those hands. Or again, yeah. shouldn't have those hands. So then it becomes, you know, his range is a lot more narrow and our hand is therefore weaker in absolute hand strength. So if you bet bigger, I, I consider folding on the turn. Well, this is an interesting spot in the Queens in a sec. Ugh. Fucking hell. Honestly, honestly, uh, am I going to say that we can fold? Oh, God, say, it's yeah. so grim in these positions, like specifically small blind, but I honestly think we can just fold. Honestly, I don't know. Why have you put me in a spot, James? Why have you put me in this <laughs> I think shoving or folding is fine. I think you could just mix between the two. I don't know. I don't think we're supposed to fold, but I think playing at fucking 25 rush on GG. This is what I thought. I mean, what uh, I was thinking was the fact that I've opened under the gun and the fact that the small blinds three bet me already already shows strength. So the guy in the big blind to them four bet just is just, it just reeks of. I think, I think we just have to fold. Like, I'm not being funny. I've folded ace-king in the big blind shoes in this spot before against a very, like, tighter player that's three-bet out the small blind. And, like, he should just in no way have jacks here. So we're looking at ace-king, kings and aces. Which, obviously, if that's what he's got, then I think we're supposed Flipping to go against with it. One. I think we're supposed to go with it. But this is just fucking... This is just grim. I, honestly, I don't care what you do here. As long as you don't call. <laughs> If you fold, fold in or shove in's fine. <laughs> uh, squeezing the ASX suited, pretty standard. Bit of a large size, but everyone's 3x in, so I think this is okay. The only reason I don't like this is that we end up just with very small SPR when we start going post-lock. The stats apart ratio is always going to be a lot smaller. But, uh, you know, we do have to squeeze reasonable size here. Want to see small bets here? I think we can just go small in these four bet parts. I know what you're probably doing. What do you do with aces here in, on the left-hand table? Like, are you going this size? I think it depends if I've got the ace of hearts. It shouldn't really make a difference. Like, again, because the stack to pot ratio is so it's... small, it's only over two. We, we don't need to choose big size in here ever. Like, my guess is that you're just going to check hands like ace, queen of diamonds. And yeah. if you if you do bet them, you, you do not want to pick this size. So I think okay. just going small here with your entire range is fine. I'm just going less than a third. This I'm is... betting 11 yeah. big blinds here. If he has tens plus or a nine, he's not going to fold to a small bet and he's not going to fold to a big bet. So it doesn't matter. So we yeah, might as well bet small with our entire range to keep weaker hands in. And especially with something like this, we can just bet small. And then if we break the turn, we can still just jam the turn. I always try and make the SPR about one by the river so that we okay. can jam the river. Obviously, in, in three bet and four bet parts, the SPR is going to be a lot smaller anyway. 
but I generally would say, you know, aim to maybe make the stack to pot somewhere around one by the river. It's not, you know, a theory thing. We don't have to, but it's just easier that way. And then we can jump like somewhere around pot because if we end up with a very small stack to pot ratio on the river, we basically can't bluff or we shouldn't be able to bluff profitably because they're just getting an amazing prize on the call and we want to be balanced. So, and we're going to have weak hands sometimes. I don't hate it because we obviously have advantage on this board, but at the same time, I just, I, I don't think there's, there's need to go this size. I don't think it achieves okay. enough. Anyway, nine ten suited. I like that we call her to the three bet. So th- this whole three X thing just really just throws me off a little bit. I, I kind of don't okay. like it. I don't want to say don't do it. It might be profitable, but I used to do it. But because I'm so used to just smaller sizes and, you know, smaller size three bet, smaller size pots where we have a bit more play and a bit more room to maneuver, it's kind of throwing me off. Um, in any case, the okay. nine ten suited here, Versus the size, when we're deeper, I think we definitely want to call. You could make an argument for folding 100 big blinds deep, but I'm not going to make that I think this hand gets interesting, but we'll see. Okay. Well, anyway, so I love nine ten of hearts. I would sleep with it if it would let me. So I'm always continuing in position. I, I, I think we mainly have one option here. Yeah, I think it's call. I Raising is a possibility. It's not a bad raise to have. I, I do like having some, you know, when we pick bluffs, I always say we want to pick our best bluffs. Some of our best bluffs here are going to be hands like, Eight nine of diamonds, nine ten of diamonds, where we have really good equity, flusher on a gut shot, but we don't have any showdown. Something else we could use maybe ace ten of diamonds or ace five of diamonds, something where we do have backdoor straight draws and a flush draw and an overcard, for example. But I think in position we want to do a bit more calling than raising anyway. So I'm generally okay. I think I'm okay calling. Interesting turn. Jam it in. <laughs> I bet you're gonna jam it in. Uh, okay, so I, I've been. I, I've seen similar spots here where we, let, let's say we flop an open ender and then we turn a flush draw with said open ender and we get bet into the, the solvers like jamming, which I think makes sense. When we just have so much equity and we still have fold equity that we can jam. So this wouldn't be a bad hand to jam. Problem is we're a little bit deeper and it's a smaller size. This is what I found interesting. I thought a lot of his value hands were just going to go bigger here a lot of the time. Uh, and I think they should um, on this board. If I have aces here, I'm just going to blast fucking near enough pot. Like, especially yeah. if I don't have the ace of diamonds or the ace of hearts because there's just so much that is just forced to call in position and it's going to suck we're going to have some grim spots on rivers when it you know when the when the flush draw com- completes or whatever but at the end of the day we want to put more money in when we have a good hand it's really annoying though because i think if we raise here we're going to want to raise to about 40 big blinds and then if we get jammed on we probably have to fold For, from an exploiter's point of view i always say that people never want to fold on these boards when there's two flush draws like on the river they just never want to they never want to fold so I think that he's going to be like, right, you know, there's so many draws out there. We don't really have that much for value. What do we have for value here? Jacks and sevens? Pocket yeah. fours with the four of diamonds, maybe, but against half Do we call think... deuces this deep? I guess we could. I, I, I tend to veer away from it because set over set is a thing, even though it's unlikely. So, yeah, I think we should probably just call. Had he bet bigger, I'd be okay with the shove because, like, let's say he bets bigger on this turn. If I have jacks and sevens, I'm jamming all the time. If I have a hand like Ace, Jack of Spades, I'm probably jamming. And so I'm going to want to have some bluffs. And those bluffs are going to be my best bluffs, which are going to be 9, 10 of diamonds, which you might raise on the flop. So 9, 10 of hearts, I think, would make a pretty good a pretty good jam. But against a small size, and honestly, I'm probably just calling because he's given us an amazing price to draw. So we're getting like 4 to 1 here. So he's given us the right price to, to, to hit our draw. And we can, in theory, still bluff on rivers. But I just say, you know, we, we're going to make it like 40 big blinds. The thing is, if he jams, we're probably not far off getting the right price here. What, what's your plan here if you get jammed on? If I get jammed, I think I just have to call. Okay. Five, six of uh, diamonds actually would be the best bluff on this turn. That, that's our best bluff. So I'm just jamming in with uh, five, six diamonds. Anyway, he folds and I'm okay with it. I think we mainly just want to call because we're a bit deeper. I think when we're less deep, we can just bang it in. But I do like your... Again, the problem is on this build, we rep so little for value. Like, really so little. But again, it, it, your line looked very strong with a small raise on the turn, so I don't hate it. Three bets here, and we are real deep. So I'm intrigued of seeing what you want to do here. I think everyone's just calling. I don't think anyone's four bets. Oh, really? I think everyone's calling this deep because you don't want to get five bet on. Yeah, but if we get five bet, we can fold, right? Yeah, but... I don't know. 
And it just gets to a point where, like, it's it's weird because on one hand, I really like four bet and deeper because we can four bet depolarize. So we can four bet like jacks and tens because we're deeper. It's not like we just have to four bet aces, kings, queens, and ace king. We can four bet hands like six, seven suited. People don't realize it, and you only see from my experience, even at hundred zoom, even against solid regs, that when they're deeper, they just four bet aces and kings, and they just call ace, king, queens, jacks, tens. Maybe they'll, they'll come in with the occasional ace five suited, but that's about it. Well, I told so, you that hand the other day, didn't I? A five bet kick aces, should I say? Yeah, we shouldn't the be five just... bet. <laughs> this is the thing as well. It's yeah. better as well if you're playing against regs in a way because he shouldn't really have a five bet in range. In fact, in position, he should literally five bet zero hands. Obviously, this is also a bit difficult because we're 100 and nearly 200 big blinds deep now. Ranges that everyone learns is for 100 big blinds deep. So I assume yeah. you're fine playing deeper, just as I am, partly because of live poker, partly because you seem like a bit of a degenerate and I like it, and that you, <laughs> you don't mind playing for these bigger pots, so a big fan of that. People rat hole, which I think is a reasonable strategy because they just want to play 100 big blind and they can learn this exact theory. What I'd recommend is trying to find some ranges for 200 big blinds and even 50 big blinds so you can play against you know these kind of players and just look at the differences in ranges and what kind of hands are, are, are more okay. suited to you know, playing deeper. For example, ace five suited and nine ten suited, any suited ace, stuff like that, they play better deeper because, you know, we can hit a nut draw and potentially cooler, hands like King Jack suited, stuff like that. But the, 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 the sizing okay by the way. I think the sizing's fine, yeah. I like the sizing. Uh we don't want to go too big, don't want to go too small. Uh, it's a little small. I might go twenty six here, twenty seven. Just because we're out of position and we're deeper. I think it's a little bit small. So we Let's go to this flop. We go to a ten high flop that we fall back. So Queen Jack here on the right hand side. We'll just talk through that one quickly. Pretty good board. I'm fine with check calling or betting. Um, and I'm actually fine check calling or betting on the turn. We block a lot of his strongest hands. I'm honestly fine check calling, just allowing him to bluff. Queen's here. It's interesting again because when we start putting a lot of money in, which I think is fine in, in, in theory, I think in practice there's so few worse hands that call us when we've taken such a strong line. So if anything, I like it, but then I'd also be having a ton of bluffs here. I'd just do this with ace five suited, five six suited, and just jam 100% of turns. I can't imagine if we bet this flop and then shove the turn that he calls with the worst hand. Also, it's getting thinner and thinner. He should still have aces and kings, by the way, because he shouldn't have yeah, a five yeah, bet yeah. range. And he has tens and jacks. So if you actually look at what we're trying to get called by here. So 12 combos of aces and kings, six each plus three so 15 combos of hands that are better than us and then like six that are worse that are definitely going to call down that might not even call down like jacks do you see what i mean so if you bet this flop and the turn comes a deuce and we jam what do you expect to call for 170 bigs yeah. total in a four bet pot yeah i'll probably just i i i'm gonna slow down i have a lot on turns i think once i've seen that because as you say that i think everything and then what do you do when you thin. what do you do when you jams for pot say we on bet the five size on the flop and then we slow down on the turn, and he goes all in for a pot size bet on a seven, seven and a half. Not being anything, are we? Like he's not doing that with jacks. You might. Is he? Do you see the problem with this line? So what would you do? Would you go? You saying once we get to the flop after we're four bet, you're saying that you just go smaller? Yeah, for sure. With queens, if we want to pick large bets, do it with bluffs and hands like aces, because aces we at least unblock queens, jacks, and kings. Queens, it's just getting thinner and thinner. So I just don't think we can start absolutely hammering money in here. Again, it's gonna you can deviate and just do it against certain opponents. If you're against a fish, he's gonna have okay. he can have hands like ace ten suited as well, or he should. But you know, most people aren't gonna three bet flat ace ten suited. You know, even though you can because you're deeper. It just depends on your player again, because like maybe he five bets, maybe he has a a, a five bang range, even though his five bet range will just be aces. And like you said, you five bet aces and somebody folded kings, like, you could even be bluffing queens here. You could even call and then let's say you jam the turn, you could even fold kings. In any case, so the, the reason why I, I'm not a fan of the four bet is because it gets thinner and thinner with queens when you're deeper. Because people are just going to play probably tighter than they should. And I know we're out of position and it sucks with queens, but we then at least keep all of his worst hands in and we're quite disguised. Again, I don't think he plays bad in theory. I just think, you, you, you know, people are just going to be too tight. Green Jack check call, and I'm probably side check call in River. Again, it'll depend on the opponent a lot. We block the nuts. We block some King X hands. The thing is, like, God, it's so rare to see a bluff like this. It's honestly so fucking rare. I remember this hand because I thought you were going to fucking hammer me for it. Um, I don't, sure. Okay. It's unfortunate. 
We'll say that. So we <laughs> raise blind on blind. Let's go through the hand all together. We raise blind on blind. We're using this three and a half X size. I think it's fine. I think he should be three betting more often than not, by the way. I think because you've raised bigger, he should actually be three betting more because he's getting a worse price on a call. And King Queen, we can mix between calling and, and three betting. So I think he should be more inclined to three bet here. But people don't see it that way. They see a bigger size and they just want to call. On the flop, I don't know why he's not raising. I, I guess it's all right. Against a small size, he should be raising him a reasonable amount. On the turn, uh, we check call. He bets half pot, that's fine. So this is the thing on the river. Honestly, it's so fucking rare to see a bluff like this. But we have a hand where we're supposed to call. We block the nuts. We block his strongest king X hands, king queen and king jack. You know, he's not going to have like king deuce off, king three off, king four off. But like, I can't remember the last time I got into a spot like this. Because we have king X here, wasn't bluffing. <laughs> people don't bluff. Like they honestly just don't fucking bluff. They just always have value because we do have some king X here that we can check call with. We have hands like ace queen, queen jack that we're just not going to fold. It's so rare to see a bluff here. Yeah, I, I think I'm okay with your line. I don't want to say that nobody bluffs in this spot. I don't want to give people that assumption and people going off to just check fold rivers, you know, willy-nilly and just being like, oh, no, Weasel said nobody bluffs this spot because that's really, that's that's like really dangerous, dangerous thinking to think like that. I, I was just expecting him to have value. I wasn't expecting him to have king-queen, by the way. I was expecting him to have value and he had value, but I do think that from a theory approach, this is a call here. The point is, like, you know, I saw I saw a hand... Ooh! Hang on! Ah! 6-5 suit. How dare you? How fucking dare you? It's not even that bad folding here, but... Come on, look how fucking sexy that hand is, man. How dare you, James? Yeah. What do your ranges say out of interest? It says fold 6-5 suit. It really? opens 6-7 suit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Bluff the spot really just wanks off these suit connectors. It's opening... Four, four or five suited plus under the gun, which I think is too loose. I, I, I used to do this all the time, and it also loves defending to three bets with them. I think that under the gun we want to fold some. I'm just not folding this. I'm just not folding this. I, I think it's kind of close. But again, you, you know, you're saying we're using this big sizes because we, we don't mind playing bigger pots, but then at the same time, we also want to raise because we want to be playing We want to be playing more pots against these weaker players in general. I, I think maybe because we're using this bigger size and that we, we might be wanting to fold this. I, I think we should be folding this under the gun for sure. Splash pot, yay! Ooh, this is—is is this plus twenty? You don't want to be deep here. Oof. See, I don't know how to play these, and I. Just My thought... advice, and this is this isn't advice backed I've got by any. Two hundred bigs here, by the way. <laughs> this, this 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 advice isn't backed by any professional standards, but my advice for under the gun is to have a limp only range, and so we have okay. some limp calls, some limp folds, and some limp jams. If we're a hundred big blinds deep here, by the way. When the, when the splash is 20 big blinds, I think we should have an open jamming range. I think in later positions, we can have an open jamming range. I think under the gun, I just want to have a limping range. So I would just limp my entire range here and obviously limp jam this hand. <coughs> I'm very curious to see what you're going to do. If you fucking raise to like three and a half big blinds, I'm going to slap you in the mouth. I'm not that stupid. Mouth. Jesus. That's pretty much just a shit, by the way. Because look, <laughs> look at the price you give in anyone. So if you raise here three big blinds, right? On the yeah. right hand side, look at the price you give in the button. Less than two to one. Look at the price you're giving the, the cutoff of the button here. 7, 14, 21, 28. You're giving him four to one. This just doesn't achieve... I, I don't know what sizes we should be using, which is why I like to have a limping range. But you yeah, give everyone an amazing I price. I don't know. I don't know how to play them, so... Agreed, I but... I can be excused for this. I, I, absolutely. Um, I think limping makes sense. Yeah, I don't like the sizing. I'd probably go maybe 12 and a half big blinds if we're going to raise 15, maybe. I think we should just have a limping range. It's wild that you only get one call by the short stack. I think we just have to call oh, once we've done that, right? Well, do we have to? Are we meant to once we've done this? Because I'm sure we can just shove anything now. I can shove all 7x, all 9x, all jack queen, all... Yeah, probably. And we've still got equity against the 6-8 and the 10. Yeah, probably have to call. We're getting 2-1, to one, over 2-1. Two to 33% equity against his range. Probably just about have it. Have it less if he's shoving his two pairs in set, but we don't expect him to shove his two pairs in sets. Why on earth would you fucking flat 10-6 off? Is it 10-6 off he's got? Yeah. <laughs> and then fucking donk jam when he's flopped two pair. Yeah, I think we probably have to call. He shouldn't really have his two pairs in sets that he jams with anyway, so I think we... It's very unlikely we have, like, 5% equity like we have. But, yeah, I think limping just would avoid this. Uh, and if we limp, then, obviously, we break and we go nine way or whatever, so... But yeah, I think limping under the gun in those uh, in those in those spots.
The reason that these are annoying as well is because it makes it so fucking high variance. If we've got 100 big blinds in the cutoff and we've got pocket twos, I'm pretty sure the best play would be to open shove for 100 big blinds. Nobody wants to open jam 100 big blinds with deuces. But it'd be making money to... We could have even open jam this, by the way. Even for 200 big blinds. Like, if everyone folds, it's fine. We win 20 big blinds, that's a lot. We're going for the uh, little four bet here. Big punt to you, aren't you? Uh, I like the size. <laughs> I don't mind the four bet. I think it's fun to do with a deuce because you can then... Well, you can't at rush. Oh, no, you can. Uh, you can just show, show the, the deuce. deuce. <laughs> and it's, just, it's just a big middle finger. Deuce, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm okay with the four bet. So when we pick four bet bluffs, we want to, you know, have some equity and, <clears> and block, block some of his right? continuing range. So good hands to do it with. Something like ace-two suited. Because if he's calling like jacks and queens, we still have an over. If we have something like king jack suited, we block hands like ace king, kings, jacks, and we also just are gonna have you know good playability. We can still hit some good hands when we when we go post lop. So these are the kind of hands you want to bluff with. Don't want to be overdoing it though. Yeah, certainly seems all right here. About seven big blinds somewhere around there is fine with the ace king. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we just want to call this ace king this deep. I see. I don't really see anything else we want to do. But again, in this spot, when we're this deep, if we were 100 bigs deep, I'm probably just jamming a lot. But when we're a bit deeper, I'm probably just calling a lot. So that also means I'd be calling hands like aces and kings. Ding, ding, fucking ding. Put money in now. The, the, the good thing about this is like, we block aces and like, his cold four betting range smacks this board. So we should be c betting. Yeah. Like he can still have queens, jacks, tens. Like ace, queen, it should be like one of his worst hands here. Maybe ace, jack, suited. What size? Is it just small? Whatever you want. You got the nuts. Is I I don't know what to say actually because it's a four bet pot. Like four bet pots are so infrequent. Like because whenever you study cash games and stuff, you study hundred big blinds deep. Hundred big blinds deep. This doesn't happen. We go all in pre flop. Whenever you're deeper, it generally you can start exploiting more and playing going away from theory because two hundred big blind ranges and stuff aren't solved or when they are, nobody really studies them. Again, from sort of exploitative, just put money in on this board. Doesn't matter how much. I want to just put loads of money in. I'm probably just betting half pot or more. The range that we're trying to target here is going to be strong. If he randomly called four bet eights or nines, he's probably just folding anyway. But because he has aces, kings, ace, queen, queens, jacks, tens, just put loads of money in. Yeah. My guess, by the way, is he's got ace, king. In any case, I just want to put as much money in as I can while I've got the nuts. So I'm just betting bigger than this. But from a theory point of view, from a theory point of view, we probably want to check. This is better for him. But it's a four bet pot, so both our ranges are strong, so it doesn't really matter. This ace four offsuit, by the way, we can three bet this hand sometimes. I use some of these hands as a three bet bluff. So ace two, ace three, ace four, ace five. I'll be three betting sometimes, calling sometimes. I think either is fine. My guess is uh, T. Grang is going to check raise, and he's going to have ace king. You can do whatever you. I I'm probably just jamming here. Not with the ace four, obviously, with the ace king. I'm probably just jamming. The reason being, like, what's he going to check raise with that, that then folds? Like, honestly, what bluffs yeah, does he have? He shouldn't ever be check raising aces or kings here. If he does and then folds, he's just a weirdo. If he has, I don't know, if the board pairs are in a spot, let's just put all the money in when we've got the nuts. I guess Colin's fine, actually. I guess Colin's fine. But again, exploitative wise, just fucking, he's just got a hand, put it in. Uh, the ace four, we bet. I honestly don't mind checking this hand. Because I want to have some ace extra check with, and ace four is basically our worst ace. He still has advantage on this board on the right, don't forget, so he can check raise with some hands. So we don't want to go putting loads okay, of money yeah. in. I think ace four on a dry board like this makes a nice check. There's argument for trying to get, you know, 10x to, to call or like queen jacks and stuff, but it's still a board he has advantage on. We're not happy getting raised. It's getting thinner and thinner. We also do want to have some ace x. I bet he's got ace king. Just. Oh, such trap like oh my god uh, oh let's check raise here like fucking yeah go on then go on then t granger let's see all your bluffs that you've got there that you're balancing with yeah just it was going in anyway you chop and pay hey, rake and chop parts and gg i think you do so anyway yeah pretty standard but again we can just bet bigger on the flop and we can just jam jam the turn i did check this turn with ace four didn't i yeah i think it's fine and then we just have a very easy call raisins too thin i bet you chop against ace five <laughs> okay Again, like, so the ace four is kind of basically a two street hand on this board is the way I'd put it, right? So we can't yeah, really yeah, sure. get three streets from ace four. So when we check the turn, if we check the flop, we can bat turn and river, or he's going to bat turn and then we can bat river. If we bat oh, the flop, bat flop, check turn, bat check river. turn, either bat or call river. Do you see call what I mean? River, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of doesn't matter, but we do want to have some strong hands like top pairs that we check back the, you know, Check about the turn with sometimes. King, queen, we defend, and I like the check raise versus a small size. 
Very big fan of it. This is one of the strongest one pair hands we're going to have. Four on the turn, I think we can go either way here. So this is a better card for us in general than it is him. So we can have some straights here, like Ace do suited and such. I mean, so can he, but generally these sort of lower cards kind of benefit us a bit more. It's also good. We don't have a spade. He could float hands like Ace Jack of Spades, Ace King of Spades. You can still have like Queen Ten of Spades and such that continues. So I think I like, it is a bit of a sketchy card, but I think I like when we're in the big blind continuing her. Still a load of Queen X that can call. He can still have, you know, some floats and maybe Jacks and Tens that doesn't want to believe you and pay you off. So the Jack 5 suited here, I think we can open. Um, it is probably going to be marginal, I would imagine, on the button. Jack 5 suited, pure opening here. Your ranges might say, otherwise I've just closed them now. But again, it, it, it's always the bottom of the range that you're not opening and stuff. But I do think that we can be opening. It's not far off then, yeah. You know, again, we're going for that 3x size and we should open tighter, but I think people are probably folding more, so I don't think it makes that much of a difference, to be honest. Interesting to see what you're going to do with this A7 here. I'm going to, I'm interested to see what I do with this A7 because I can't remember. Uh, I'm okay with it. So. We we'll just pick up equity as well. We'll pick up even more. Right? Are you doing this with like Ace 10 of clubs? I, I'm much happier you doing this with Ace 7 of clubs than I am Ace 10 of clubs. The reason being, Ace 10 of clubs has a bit more showdown. So when we bet this turn. We're doing, we're doing two things. Like, it's not really a value bet. It's basically a semi-bluff. All we're doing really, we're, we're just pressing our equity. We're just we're putting more money in when we have a ton of equity, which I think is fine. When we have Ace-10, it becomes thinner because if we have Ace-7, we can get some 10x to fold. We can get 8s and 9s to fold, and then we lock up equity against random nonsense. When we bet a 10, you know, we get 8s and 9s to fold, which we don't want to fold. Uh, and we never get a king to fold. Even I'm thinking though, whether I could, might even just go third pot with. With this hand? Yeah. I don't know whether that... I prefer going be bigger because we are still effectively bluffing. But with something yeah. like ace tenor clubs, maybe go small. But I think I'd prefer just check calling ace tenor clubs because we still have the best hand a lot. Do you, do you see what I mean here with the differences between ace tenor clubs and ace seven of clubs? Yeah, of course. You've got so much more... Yeah, you have so much more showdown value with just the ten. Agreed. With the seven. I am guilty of generally just smashing, you know, bat here with a hand like even a seven because we now do have showdown, right? We beat hands like queen jack, you know, we beat hands like ace jack, ace queen. So I think you can go either way here. I think I'm much more likely to check a hand like ace ten of clubs and bet a hand like ace seven or like six seven of clubs because we still have bluff equity in the way that we still get some better hands to fold as well as maybe getting some worse hands to call and we set up, you know, a bigger part for when we do hit. So there's kind of a lot of reasons why we're betting here. In general, you know, most bets are either going to be bluff or value. This is kind of mergy, but I think I like it. Just when we have this much equity in the hand, you know, betting, betting can't really be that bad. My guess, though, is if, if you had no showdown, you'd probably overbet, wouldn't you? What if you had ace jack of clubs there? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I'm overbet. So you'd overbet. Which I think is <laughs> yeah. fine. These kind of boards are good to overbet. Like, I'd be overbetting um, aces. I'd be overbetting king 10. I'd be overbetting sevens. I'd be overbetting tens. Just because yeah, people... Yeah, I overbet all the good stuff here just because it's just so vulnerable, right? Exactly. And it's such a wet board. People won't believe you and stuff. So I do think overbetting is viable. But with that hand, it doesn't really make that much sense as an overbet kind of thing. So, Jacks. This Ooh, is interesting. This is a shit board. This is a board we want to do a lot of checking on. And yes! Yeah, but the thing is, we're against a fun player. If anything, it kind of makes more sense to bet. I'm talking from a theory point of view. I think, though, Jax works better as a bet because we've got way more to protect from than, say, aces. So with aces, we've got, you know, obviously shit cards are obvious, like an eight, a four, a nine, shit like that. But Jax is also a king, queen, or ace. So even though we want to do a lot of checking on this board, if we're going to bet some hands, I think Jax is a fine hand to bet. When we're against fun players, I definitely think Jax is a good hand to bet. Do I do here? Exactly. What do you do here? Out. You're just like, ah, shit. The river, I think, is easy now. We just check all. I think betting is too thin because what are we trying to, like, we need him to have ace 10, king 10, queen 10 suited, which he's just going to have, isn't he? Ah, got get wrecked. I think checking's fine. I think against fun players, though, we can just bet because we want protection with this board. And against fun players, they're not going to be as aggressive on these boards that favor them unless they have good hands, I think. As played, I think it's fine. Think about it on the river, though. So checking the turn's fine. Planning on check calling. We can maybe bat, but again, all it really achieves is protection. Think about this river. Like, there's so few hands that can actually call that's worth. You probably have the best hand, right? I know you don't in this circumstance, but you, yeah. you likely have the best hand. But what what what's your bet trying to achieve? 
You know, you're trying to get caught by worse, and then you stop him from bluffing all of his worst hands. Now, maybe it worked out in this exact case. Maybe he bets bigger with his two pair, and you lost slightly less. But it's just very unlikely he's going to call. He's going to have to have something like king 10, jack 10, queen 10. Some of those are going to be suited, and he's going to have, like, jack 10 of hearts or queen 10 of hearts, which are going to bet the turn. So we're trying to target a very specific range. Like, he's probably not going to have, like, ace 5 or ace 6. Maybe he is. But then, you know, maybe if he's got something like ace two of diamonds or something, he's just going to think, fuck it, and try and put some money in and bluff, bluff on the yeah, river. Yeah, yeah, So I'm doing too much blocker betting on rivers when he should just be check calling. Uh, yeah, I think this th this whole block bet thing is, is, you know, I never used to apply it. I basically just had, like, big bets and checks on rivers, which isn't, you know, going to be the, the best strategy. But I think you could actually just, you could still utilize that strategy and make money. As in only having big bets with strong hands or just checks to allow players to bluff. I'm not saying you should be doing, obviously, but I, I think that checking here is, again, much better than betting. You know, I know we've got an overpair to the board and he's checked back to the river, but just, again, try and think on the river. What are we going to get called by that's worse? And if we bet, are we stopping him from bluffing? What's this so queen nine off? Used to play. Out of nowhere. This Maybe isn't queen fucking... off, can't we? No. And now? In the court off. Especially not on my 3 axing. I'm pretty sure your range. Let me have a look at your ranges. I'm pretty sure your I'm ranges. I'm going to have a look there. I'm pretty sure that's a no-no. No, it's not. Yeah. It's yeah. Not. Just, ah, no. Just this is probably because you're playing your tournament. In, yeah. Probably so again. Board. Yeah, probably because I play a tournament. No, th th this is what I'm saying, though. Because these, th because yeah. you don't have these drilled into your your unconscious competence, you you are still learning these. They're, they're, they're not like second nature, like, like talking. Th this isn't going to be just something that you just do like that. So you're going to need to focus when you're doing it. If you're not focusing, you're going to be making mistakes. Opening queen nine off isn't going to be the worst mistake in the world, but if it's not opening it, it's going to be a minus EV open. Like if ranges aren't opening it, so it's going to lose your money in the long run. These little tiny things when people aren't staying focused add up, I promise you. And then when you end up, yeah, you know, do. at the tail end of like a, like a big session, like a long session and you're not really focused, You'll be making mistakes pre-flop, which will then, you know, extrapolate to post-flop, and then you'll be losing loads of money. I can't stress enough how important it is to stay focused. People, you could play this perfect strategy one day, show me the review, and I'll be like, yeah, you play perfect, and then you won't win. And then you'll be like, why am I not winning? Uh, it must just be variance. But it's not actually variance, it's you not implementing what you actually yeah, yeah. know. It's like when, you, when, when you're at school, when you learn shit at school, like, everyone gets the same information. You might have it in your head, but if you can't do the, the exams right, you know, you don't know to, how to answer the questions to get, like, four points, four marks out of four. Exams are bullshit, by the way. I was always terrible at that. But if you don't know how to answer the question, even though you have the information in your head, you're not going to get good marks on the exam. Think of poker like the exam. Like, actually playing is the exam. You know, the, the study in the preflop ranges and stuff is the information that you learn beforehand. So if you're not yeah, going to be able sure, to apply yeah. it, you, you're not going to be able to win. And so even if you know all the shit, even if you take in everything I say and, and you know, you get all this information from other places, it's all in your head. You know what you should be doing. If you're not actually doing it in real time, you're going to lose money. You're going to have a bad time. All right. So this one's going to be interesting. What am I meant to do here? Fucking, I don't know, man. Honestly, I just don't know. <laughs> if it was 20 big blind pot, just jam. As long as we're not folding, I don't mind. I think shoving's too light. But if we three bet, we should be making it about... 28 big blinds and then we have to probably call a shove anyway i'm probably just calling i don't think anyone has a strong hand either probably just calling <laughs> you just now now we just look at this like a normal pot where it was like a three bet pot or something and we look at the price we're getting the, the problem is we can be effectively dead here we could be against a, a set and the nut flush draw i think without the nut flush draw we'd have to fold if we have the nut flush draw i think we should get it in because we still dominate flush draws so we can actually have the best hand. So when when we do, which even if it's not that frequent, our equity against that overall ranges is just, you know, higher. So I'm probably just folding here, especially because we've got someone left to out with 242 big blinds. And it really sucks. We didn't really, you know, we, we, we didn't want to get to this flop just to fold the, the second nut flush draw and two overs. But I'm very worried that Ducky D has a higher flush draw. She didn't really have that many sets. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't think this is the worst thing ever. Now we want the other guy to call, because he should already be snapping the nut flush draw, so we want him to call. Okay, we have 30%, so this is actually basically the best scenario we could have been in. Which is fine, because if you know you're against these hands, we should get it in. But this is pretty yeah. much the best case scenario. Aces is a fucking idiot. No, 
<laughs> he's limped pretty low. I, I don't hate it because, you know, <laughs> you're going to get squeezed quite a lot. But when you don't, if he doesn't get squeezed, he goes five way. Like, if the button... If, 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 if you or Hill Dog don't wake up with a hand... The thing is, if he three bats and we wake up with a hand or Yoga Boy wakes up with a hand or Hill Dog wakes up with a hand, even as low as nines, we're going with it. So it's not a spot where you need to trap as much because we're going to be wider even versus a three bat. Like, yeah. we can still cold four bat, like, a lot wider than normal because both ranges are going to be wider. So when he doesn't get squeezed, he goes five way. When you go five way, it's fucking disastrous with aces. Like, think... Like, people think that, oh, yeah, we've got aces, like, it's dead good. When you're five way, your equity is less than 50%, meaning you're going to lose the hand more times than you're going to win the hand. So, yeah, I don't really like his his flat. And, you know, just imagine if you're against... That queen jack was actually um, ace jack of clubs. Then we have less yeah, than yeah. 5%. We need running two pair. So that's the only problem with it. As played, you're kind of okay seeing this. Uh, we'll take the queen. Womp, womp. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's the worst thing ever. I don't hate that yeah. you went with it. I don't think it's absolutely terrible. Ranges are going to be wider here. Some people overvalue the hand here, so I'm okay with it. I'll just fuck it, gamble. Why not? So, yeah, so that's about it. So, yeah. things I have to say about it. I mean, not really that much. I, I, I do feel as though it's difficult to gauge there what where your leaks are going to be. There wasn't as many interesting spots as I liked, but it's good to see that unlike some of the people that we've reviewed, that you're willing to double and triple barrel bluff. Okay. But I, I can't imagine you'd be losing in these pools, to be honest. I think it's just going to be variance. You just got to worry about bluffing too much and getting called down and you know when you when you start over better bluffing if you come across players that recognize what's going on i feel as though they're gonna they're, they're gonna figure you out that you're gonna be bluffing a reasonable amount so just make sure you stay focused when you play if you're playing regular tables which i think is fine just make sure that you're staying focused when you're playing this i can't i can't you know express that enough yeah yeah especially regular tables where there's just so much more opportunity to exploit because there's so much more fish and you want to target those fish you know, tag them when they do something really shit or call down. Tag them early on and note them. And then you want to be playing pots with, with these guys. You know?